In order for this game to be fun, we've got to randomize the order our country names appear. Then show an alert telling the user whether they were right or wrong when they press the flag button. And finally, re-randomize the array. There's always new flags coming up. Now we already set correct answer to be a random integer in the range of zero through two. But the flags up here, they always start in the same order. And so when the game starts, we want to modify this array to be randomized. We can do that by saying dot shuffled. Shuffle the array straight away and put the shuffled version into countries. Now for the more interesting part. Down here, the flag was tapped. That's the current code we have for our button being tapped. It's just a comment, doesn't do anything meaningful yet. We've got to replace that thing with some code to determine was this the correct flag or not that it pressed. And the best way of doing that is with a new method that accepts the number inside our for each, for each zero, one, and two. It reads that number in and checks whether it matches the correct answer, random, which is zero, one, or two. Now, regardless of whether they were correct or not, we still want to show an alert saying what happened so they can keep track of their progress. And so we'll add some properties. We'll say there is at state private var showing score is false. We also want to add a property to store the message title in our alert. So we'll say at state private var score title is an empty string. So whatever method we write to run down here when a button is tapped, it's got to accept the number of the button that was tapped. Then compare that against the correct answer and then set these two properties here to a meaningful value. So let's do that now. We'll say down here in uh, after the body property, func flag tapped, and we'll do underscore number int if number is equal to the correct answer, score title equals correct. Else, the number they chose is not the right answer, score title equals wrong. Regardless, we must always show the alert, whether it's correct or wrong, so we'll say showing score is true. And now we can call that from our button closure up here. The flag was tapped. We can go ahead and say flag tapped number. Just pass it on in. Now, before we show the alert, we've got to think about what happens when the alert is dismissed. Because, I mean, obviously the game shouldn't be over, otherwise it's got exactly one question in it. It's quite dull. Instead, we're going to write a new method down here called ask question. And this is going to reset the game by reshuffling the array and picking a new correct answer. So we'll try countries dot shuffle, shuffle, and correct answer equals int dot random in zero through two. Now that code will not compile. Errors in both places. Hopefully, maybe you can start to see why. We're trying to change properties of our struct without using the at state property wrapper. So countries here and correct answer here are both declared, but they're not designed immutable. That's where at state comes in. And so we're going to make these things at state by saying at state private var and then at state private var. Oops, only one var. And now we're ready to show the alert. So way down here, we can add in the code. This has got us to use the alert modifier to uh, make sure the alert shown when is presented is true. We'll show the correct title based on what it's set to down here or down here. Then have a dismiss button that will call ask question when we're done. And so at the end of the Z stack, go ahead and add this code dot alert score title is presented is dollar showing score then a button will say continue continue there we go action 
ask question. Then I attach a message to there as well, saying text, your score is question mark, question mark, question mark. Yes, there are three question marks here that should hold a score value. You'll be doing that part on your own.